Hello beautiful people, future me, welcome to another programming workout of mine. Let's get into it. Uh, well, we are doing PHP simple typing training, why not? Doesn't really matter which one we do. Turn PHP template get engine function storage template seven
Okay. Six percent. Oh well, that is what it is. Uh, so what do we have next? Uh, we have some review in JavaScript. Uh, we'll stop the previous timer and now I'm working on this guy. So uh, we have to write what it will be the output of uh, the code snippet right here when executed. So uh, we are setting, okay, so on the map we set the key and value par pair. I always, uh, I quite often uh, forget, uh, quite often forget what, uh, what do we Uh, which is the method? Uh, I forget the methods of the of the map and set and so on. But well, whatever. Uh, here, uh, the main takeaway of, of this is that uh, there can be only one value to uh, one key, which means on uh, this line we will set the Betty key uh, its value to be Betty dot J and so on, and then we set and the key to be betty.k example. So if we have a look at email's size, uh, it will be still one uh, because uh, we have only one entry in there. And I did not know you can do size on map, no idea. So we have a get ages, uh, that is a map. And here we can see that we can initialize that, uh, I mean, it has a constructor which takes uh, two dimensional arrays and, and the top uh, the top array is full of another arrays which is uh, pairs of key value uh, key value uh, uh, properties pairs maps pairs pairs uh, so what we are doing here is get ages keys, which I think is a generator function, maybe. Uh, on a map dot keys, huh. map dot keys JavaScript. We'll have a look. <laughs> Java T point. JavaScript, okay. interesting page. So, uh, keys returns an object of new map iterator. So it returns an iterator. Okay, cool. So that is iterable. And that can do, we can do like iterate over it, like, like the has next and so on, or uh, what we did here is to create an array from it, which is kind of nice shortcut. So here we will have a Mrs. Fluff as the first one, and then we will have Kinu as the second one. Now, we have a class uh, named user. Uh, its constructor takes uh, a name parameter and we will set it on the object uh, or the instance if you want to. Uh, then we have a, another uh, method and here it shows that we can use a string as a method name. And this will just return the, uh, the setup name. And here we are creating a new instance of the, that class and immediately after that we are calling its method. Uh, we cannot here do the dot and uh, single quotes and so on. Uh, JavaScript would not understand what that means. 
Uh, so the way it is similar with arrays, we kind of accessing the field, so to say, and the field happening happens to be a a function, so we can call it. So this will return as the setup set name, the given parameter which we gave in here, and that is Marie. Next, imagine that we are building a social network, right? A, a social graph class with two methods. The add follow method uh, records that user, oh yeah, that I was doing previously and I did not finish it. So uh, you can use arrays includes method to check whether users in another user's follow list. Well, I will not use an array I will use the set just because I'm lazy. So, first uh, we have this one, we will create a map, so that will be just new map, like so, and that will be all to our constructor. The next method I will be doing is to uh, add follow uh, to else add follow. Uh, that will take two parameters. Uh, one will be the user1 and then the user2. Um, the user1 uh, will be the user uh, for which we track who is he following. Alright, so if user1 follows user2, 3, 4, 5, whatever, uh, we will store uh, th this is how it works. User one follows that that guy. So first, uh, we will check if we have the user one as a key in our map. If he doesn't, that means he doesn't follow anyone. Uh, and uh, mainly, uh, it means that we don't have a, a set up the the key value par in our map for user one. So if it doesn't contain our user one and the keys, that means uh, we have to create it uh, that in this case. So we say if not uh, this dot map has user one, uh, we will uh, we will set uh, like. Uh, this dot map uh, set and we say user one and the structure uh, which they are proposing in here to have an array uh, in there but uh, if I use the array I will have to always check if it's if the user two is already there if user already follows the user two and I will use the property of the set and that means you can have only one uh, unique values can be only there once so if I put it there one and I put there one again I will have only once one <laughs> and there if that makes sense so I say new set I'll create that and that will be it then uh, I will use that ability and I will say this dot map dot get user one. So what I have uh, done in here is I took this map uh, and this is the reference to the map on this on the social graph object, right? And then if I say get user one, uh, that will get me the the corresponding pair uh, or the value to the key user one, right? So that means we have the new set or we have the set which we might or may not create it on a previous line. Depends if it exists already or not. So if it doesn't exist, blah, 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 it will create. Uh, now we have the set and we can just say add user2 and we don't have to care about it because it can be only once there. So 
next thing, uh, we have the follows function. And also, so here, this one should uh, return true or false if the user one follows user two. So user one and user two uh, will be our parameters, input parameters, again. And here, basically, uh, I have to do for, uh, two things. Uh, first, I will check if uh, our map uh, has a key of user one. If it doesn't, you know, like there, we cannot find it in any record. Uh, user one doesn't follow anyone, and uh, we will return false in that case, right? So if uh, this dot map has user one. We will, yeah, and I will close this, return false, All right? He doesn't follow it. We have another case, and that is uh, if uh, user one is a key uh, in our map, but it follows someone else. It doesn't follow user two. So, uh, we can we can say if uh, now I will get uh, I will get the uh, the set right so I will say this dot map uh, dot get user one now I have the now I have the I have the set inside of the map uh, I s I have the set which is a value for the user one in there in our map and I say has user two, and if it doesn't, if it doesn't, it will return false, right? I could combine those in a one, and I actually want to try it, so I'll put this, not and, so. Paste. Here we go. Yeah. So here we are checking for those things, and if we if we has the key and the user one user one follows the user two, we will return true. And that's the opposite case, right? And I hope this one stops because I don't remember correctly. You had one of those which kind of evaluate this, and if this one is false, and this one is true, uh, it doesn't evaluate this one. So I hope uh, how this one works. Uh, so we have a constructor as follow follows, and that should be everything. Okay, let's see, I will run it, and we have a problem, unexpected token this, okay, so where it could be, okay, it could be here, it could be here, okay, so this looks like it, or this guy, I don't know. Okay, so I will comment this out. And now when I... S okay, so that was the place. What about this guy? Run. Add of undefined. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have the problem in here. And uh, now I see that I forgot one closing banana. Here we go. So it works. This works. Mm, I like. I like how it looks. Okay. So next one. Uh, we have a uh, const names equals blah 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 blah. So uh, we have a set. We have two distinct values uh, in our set. So the size will be two. Uh, magnify. And, and large and whatever. So this one is longer. So let's read read through it. 
I kind of like to look at the the stuff that is actually executed. You know, that kind of uh, uh, that kind of uh, directs me faster. So we are creating Greyhound and Canwalk is the one interesting to us, and we have a new Greyhound, and we check for run. That is a parameter on, on that is a property uh, on that object, and we are doing the same for a puck. All right. So the Greyhound extends a dog, and dog has uh, a Canwalk uh, thing. So uh, Greyhound uh, extends dog, and the constructor doesn't take any uh, uh, any any parameter, but calls uh, the parents uh, parents constructor in here uh, with a 65, so which is dog. Dog uh, creates. Uh, animal and so uh, uh, th th this line uh, so that will set the leg count on uh, 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 in here to four and now we have a can walk will be true because uh, the leg counts is uh, bigger and after after that uh, after set up to creating the instance using the uh, the parents uh, parents constructor, well, we are not really setting up creating the object, right? We are calling the parents constructor and then we continue on. We are kind of using like the, the code written in here. Then we set up the the run run speed and. Uh, that's it. Okay, and we are doing the same for for the pack. So we are saying five. Uh, the parent is dog, so leg count will be four. Uh, so we will we will get the following array. This is an array you see right from from here to here. So it will be the greyhound can walk through. It is sixty five. Uh, true, the peg can walk, but it's really slow. Uh, that's it. Another one. So we create a new map uh, and we point an emails variable to it, reference to it. And in that map, uh, we then set uh, a few uh, few pairs: Amir, Bate and then we ask about the size so the size will be two and then we uh, destructure emails into an array and here you can see that we kind of can extract it to a array right and here uh, the first one does doesn't mean doesn't have anything but we created like uh, the variables name and email by saying const and name and email are kind of uh, mirroring the structure which is inside of the emails map so then and at the end we output uh, in the uh, in the string literal we are using the string literal, literal to output uh, some string and the string will be uh, will be the email for now there's a, what is in the name variable the second one is Betty so it will be Betty is and then the email and the second one in the map is Betty at example.com so it will be Betty example.com and this is how it goes uh, we finish review because we are great. Okay, so finish this, which is nice. I still have some time to go, so I'll go. There's a JavaScript race. Here we go. 
uh, we have some lesson in here which I did not go through. So I can start with that. Most programming languages have an array data type that's separate from the language languages other data types. JavaScript and is unusual here. In JavaScript arrays are a special type of object. We can see this by looking at type of some array which will return object just like it does for a regular object. So type of which is the operator uh, which will return uh, what it is, uh, the what the what the well, mm, object literal. What what is the type of the thing? <laughs> Use the thing vaguely in here. Uh, so if we put in there are some array, uh, it will return the object, which is something which we would not expect. In other languages, we will get array or Mm, some something something like that or array of integers or array of strings what have you uh, not in JavaScript in JavaScript is a little bit complicated in this sense uh, that will say an object so array really is like the special case of an object if you want so here we have type of and here we have initialization of an object right the curly braces stands for object so that gets an object, and that is something we would expect. If you have type of an array, it will say object 2, which we just explained. A type of, and then here we have another example of an array. This is not empty array, it contains three elements, and, uh, and the return value will be object string 2. Fortunately, this doesn't affect normal uses of arrays. When we store values, uh, the array indexes, and then read them back, everything works normally. However, there are some weird effects if we look closely. Most notably, we can assign to arbitrary properties of the array. So we have a A, B, C, and then we can say array 5 and then array 5 will be 5 okay so that is very weird so this will give us 5 and array 6 will be 6 okay extra properties assigned to an array don't change its length so hopefully there will be okay so we have these four then we add the 5 uh, but the, uh, they are saying the array length will be still as we had it in here, which is free. In the most cases, adding extra properties to arrays in this way is a mistake. When other programmers read the code and see an array, they will expect it to act as a normal array. They won't expect it to have these extra properties. True. Here's an example. Imagine that we are building a service where one account can have multiple team members. So one account, multiple team members, okay. The more team members customer has, the more money we charge them, okay. So we need to keep track of both the members and the limit. Somewhere in our application, we have a team members array. We could store a limit number directly on the array, indicating how many team members are allowed in this account. Okay, so this is our array, and we can say the limit on the array, and if the team members length. And this is the expression which will be evaluated. The last last line, right? It should. This is like specialty of this, uh, this exe execute program environment. So, it will be true. The length right now is two. Right, we have a two uh, team members. So I uh, will write it here. True. This works, but it's not a good idea because it's surprising. 1999 out of 1,000 arrays are just arrays. 
when one in 1000 of them also has extra properties like this uh, other programmers won't expect it uh, which can lead them to make mistakes for example they might build a new array and and pass it to a function, not realizing that the function expects the array to have uh, this usual unusual limit property. Build a new array, so basically a copy, I think. Okay, and we are out of the time. So, uh, this means we are done. That is better than perfect. And I will see you next time. Bye.